The invention of the electric violin was all about turning up the volume. It was back in the Big Band era, and the sound of the traditional violin was overpowered by the horns and drums. Amplifying the violin changed everything. Suddenly, the violin wasn't just a background sound, it was part of the show. The wired violin comes in different shapes because it doesn't rely on the body to resonate sound. This craftsman builds his electric violins one piece at a time, starting with the neck. He traces the shape onto a piece of maple. Then he outlines the top plate. He uses walnut for the lower bout or bottom part, as well as for the backbone of the violin. Next, he cuts out the shapes using a bandsaw. His goal here is to be very precise, because the closer he gets to the outline, the less sanding he'll have to do later. The dimensions for the top and neck are exactly the same as a traditional violin, so there won't be any difference in the reference points the violinist relies on. The lower bout is very stylized, and the head is more streamlined than a traditional violin. There's no decorative scroll. Next, he chisels out a cavity in the head of the violin to create the peg box. He carves parallel grooves onto the back to give it a snazzy look. Using a rasp, he shaves the wood to the correct thickness. He drills holes for the tuning pegs into the side of the peg box, one for each of the four strings. He files down the grooves on the back a little more. Then he scrapes the rest of the neck to give it a final finish. Using a reamer, he tapers the peg holes. The ebony pegs have matching tapers so they fit snugly into the holes. He checks to make sure everything measures up. Now he brushes wood glue onto the next section and presses the ebony fingerboard onto it. He wraps them with surgical tubing to hold them together while the glue dries. He drills two assembly holes in the top piece and makes corresponding holes in the other parts. He smooths the edges of the backbone with an oscillating sander. Then, using a high-speed router, he bevels the lower bout piece to give it a clean edge. He rubs teal-colored stain into the wood because loud colors seem appropriate for these high volume instruments. A crystal has been glued into the violin's wooden bridge to generate electricity from the string's vibrations and create sound. He pulls the wire from the bridge through the backbone and then mounts the bout to the backbone. He bolts an ebony chin rest on top Next, he attaches the neck to the rest of the assembly. He loops on the ebony tailpiece. He pulls a string from the tailpiece to a peg. The act of tightening the first string raises the bridge, which will be held in place only by tension. Now it's time to hook up the violin to the amplifier and let the music tell the rest of the story.